Public knowledge has been busy over the past year, busy calling for change from Congress, busy advocating for consumers, and busy protecting users as they navigate the internet. We've shared dozens of policy proposals and written letters to encourage greater accountability for dominant digital platforms. So I urge you to both press enforcement at the agencies, update the, the laws, but add new powers so that we have the right set of pro-competition tools to drive entry into these digital platform markets. I hope that platforms will choose to be open and deal fairly with the companies that are using the platforms, um, choose to be interoperable, uh, choose to make those APIs available, stop uh, shutting down the adversarial interoperability attempts, um, don't uh, discriminate anti-competitively when you are the recommendation algorithm. Um, all of these uh, rules that we're thinking about, they could start following them now. We've spoken up for small businesses struggling to survive online even before the pandemic. Congress must set rules of the road that protect small businesses from anti-competitive abuse and provide the stability necessary for investment and for commerce to thrive. And our experts testified before Congress seven times published five papers, and filed eight amicus briefs in the highest courts. And when COVID-19 changed all of our lives, our work became more important as policymakers, and the public rediscovered issues that public knowledge had consistently championed, such as open access to knowledge and information, and affordable access to broadband for all. The pandemic didn't shut us down. It accelerated the importance of our role public knowledge continued to connect key stakeholders in industry and public interest to find consensus. And we began hosting online events to connect the public to the policy issues facing them in these unprecedented times. It's not just that everybody needs broadband to participate. It's that society as a whole benefits when everyone is connected. It's been about 10 years since uh, we passed the, or, or, or since the FCC created the National Broadband Plan. Um, and we've been talking about getting the entire country connected to broadband for many, many years, not just that decade, but even before that. Um, and so to see, you know, this issue raised up as uh, uh, important in this crisis just shows us how much further we have to go. The pandemic has introduced this crazy paradox People are turning to their local journalism outlets more than ever before for reliable, deeply local information about how the virus is impacting their communities. And they're also using it to counter the misinformation that they're seeing all over the internet and in social media. But at the same time, shelter in place orders and shuttering of local businesses have cratered local advertising. In the midst of important social movements, we showed how systematic policy changes could make things better for everyone. In order to actually fix the problem and ensure that broadband is deployed universally across the country, um, you know, we need to make sure that every community has access to quality service and affordable rates. We advocated for creating comprehensive privacy legislation to protect Americans online, including their data collected in contact tracing apps how to prevent this from becoming some dystopian nightmare is that there needs to be controls on how the data is used. And there should be three basic controls that we're seeing. One, only collect data that's absolutely necessary. Two, only use the data for what, you're say you're, what you say you're going to use it for and not share it with anyone else. And then three, delete it once it's done. The problem here is we don't have a federal privacy law. So this all has to come from written agreements with tech companies, with application developers, with governments. What we'd much rather see is this, these principles enshrined in law. And we've helped protect free speech online ensuring that every voice can be heard during powerful moments to bend the arc of the moral universe towards justice. The internet is how we bear witness. It is how we see with the hope of understanding those whose experiences, whose struggles are not our own. It is how many Americans were first exposed to the tangible reality of police brutality and systematic oppression. It is how the work of community activists and organizers is amplified and how injustice is brought before the eyes of the world. If we are to strike any sort of new balance, it must keep the needs of 229 million voices and their ability to speak at front of mind. 2020 has made everyone examine how we can help each other, including those of us at Public Knowledge. 
And although none of us could have predicted what would happen this year, we've worked hard to meet these new challenges. We are so excited to be celebrating with everyone today, even if we can't be together in person. This year has sparked immense growth and change in our organization, and we're better positioned than ever to tackle the challenges of 2021, our 20th anniversary. We hope you'll join us along the way. Thank you for your support.